welcome to the stream. Um, I've updated the, uh, if you go to the Twitch about or whatever, there's panels on the front. Um, <laughs> uh, there's panels at the front uh, linking to two of the topics that uh, I intend to get to today, which is, as I make my way back through there, so I'll just put it in, in the chat, but uh, here is, that's the main about, and uh, Kristen has joined me, thank you very much for, uh, for coming along, for looking at uh, me reviewing the Function Granular Kernel ASLR series which is going to be the first topic right there at that URL. Anyway, that's on, on the topic list. Um, and then uh, assuming there's time or if we get, if I get stuck in things that aren't interesting uh, for people, uh, we can switch to looking at Clang builds and perhaps even trying to do a, a Clang build of uh, FGE KSLR. Um, anyway, so, uh, this is, hold on, let's see where we are. So the thread, oops, let's make it. I'm not doing the right thing here. Do, 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 do. Copy link. Apparently I've designed this thing to be, uh, Oh, right, because this link's actually wrong, ha ha ha. Because for whatever reason, uh, I think the main LKML list didn't actually get, um, didn't actually get the, the, the cover letter for some reason. So sorry, the correction should be this one, hopefully. Yes, okay, there's the thread. Uh, I've fixed the links on the main page. All right, hello, welcome. Um, anyway, so this this is the main, uh, this is the, the thread for uh, Kristen's V5 of Function Granular KSLR. If you want to read uh, the details uh, on what and why, uh, there's a ton, of, a ton of excellent detail in there, but uh, I can give you sort of the uh, the, the short version of this, which is that uh, existing kernel ASLR uh, is sort of a single random number because it bumps the offset of, of the action of the kernel up by a fixed amount. It's random at every boot, but that means that all of the functions, all the symbols, everything that uh, you'd want to target as an attacker is just moved uh, by one offset. So if you can figure out the base offset, then you can figure out where everything is because usually you're dealing with a, a pre-built kernel. So you know the layout of the kernel. Um, function granular KSLR, however, seeks to randomize the location of all of the functions. So if like every function is in its own section, you shake them all up at boot time and they get laid out in a completely random order. Um, at boot, which if you figure out where one specific function is, it doesn't really tell you much about where anything else is. Uh, so this this makes things even more difficult in the face of, of leaks, uh, or I should say exposures. I don't want to confuse leak with resource leak. Um, anyway, so uh, I'll just, I'm just going to jump in as I would with normal tools and everything else to pull this down. Um, I'm going to start off of Linus's current tree just because I know some fixes for Clang and other things went in there. Uh, so first I'll make a work tree. So I'm going to put this in. How about there? This is based off that. A uh, question on chat is, uh, is this a hobby or actual work that I do for a living? This is my actual work. Um, I'm trying to uh, help get FGKSLR into the upstream Linux kernel because I think uh, 
basically everyone in the, the Linux ecosystem can benefit from it, including Google. So in theory, we could get this for Android and Chrome OS and everything else, cloud. Um, okay, so I'm gonna call this uh, KSLR v5 so oops, sorry, my dash b is not on place. So on a basis off master, um, I'm gonna put it in that directory and I'm gonna call this uh, version five of, hopefully it won't collide with anything else. Uh, that'll basically check out master somewhere else where I can play with it. Um, and they ask, am I doing this on work time? I'm doing this on work time right now. Um, seems as though uh, other people benefit from it, so I include it. It's what I'd be doing basically right now anyway. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so, yep, Kristen's able to answer your questions there about specifics since I'm a bit of a, I'm at a bit of a lag on answering the chat right away. Um, okay, anyway, so I've checked this out into FGKSLR here. Uh, we're gonna go pull down that tree and hopefully uh, before we'll be able to figure this out. Uh, I think I want, whoops, uh, 4 a.m. I'm gonna include the dash capital T. I don't think there are any trailers here on this. But once again, pull in topic thread URL for B4. And let's see what it does. Right, so it pulls down that, that whole thread we were, we'd already seen and grabs all the patches. There's been no uh, additional repeat by yet. So uh, here I am, and I'll just git am this. I could have done it slightly differently, but um, OK. So good news, <coughs> it applies cleanly. Uh, which makes my life easier. Um, <clears throat> so if we go look at, I already missed the reply. There it is. Um, the notes here uh, mentioned in the patch patch ordering here is that there is a couple. Uh, couple patches that are basically waiting to go into into next already. Uh, for example, the, the Relox tool supporting more than 64K sections. This one should already be, uh, I think, in next or will be soon. So some of these are a little bit, uh, that one I think is redundant. Some of the other things have already gone in. Um, and I've already reviewed this one. Um, I wrote that one. I reviewed that one. Do that one. Do that one. I think it's mostly just changes to um, yeah. This oh, I almost feel like that should just go in normally. Um, that's the real bulk of it right here. Is number seven and some additional things to avoid memory exposures. And the big change I think for V5 was getting a live patch to work, which is pretty awesome. Um, anyway, so there's nothing there that uh, I need to really call out except for that that first one should already be in there. Uh, so the way this works, <clears throat> if you if you look at a standard, uh, I don't know where I've got one lying around, um, but if you look at a standard, hold on, hopefully I'm remembering these. Yeah. If you look at a standard <clears throat> L file for the kernel image. Um, you can see all these sections uh, that came out. Um, a lot of them are not super duper exciting, uh, but you know you see the the big one here. Number number one is the dot text, <clears throat> and that's most of the kernel code. There's a bunch of other tables and uh, you know init and exit code that gets thrown away later on. Um, and the big difference <clears throat> with FGKSLR is that it builds with uh, dash f function sections, I think, uh, if that's the right one. You can look at the make file for that. 
right? So, and what that does is it asks the uh, the linker, the compiler and linker, to spit a each function into a separate section, dot text dot something or other, and uh, we can see that here in a second. Uh, let me grab you know, some known working dot config and we'll make the new config of this. Or let's see where is it? No, I can't remember where it is. Uh, hold on. Underscore. My bad. So I want to search for this. It is under general setup. General setup. So this is uh, where it is in the in the kconfig. Uh, describes these things. So I'll just turn it on here for fun. And then we can see the results. There it is, our FGKSLR. I think, yep. Yeah. And then I'll also turn on the module FGKSLR, um, since that'll do more fun stuff. Um, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll just build it. Let's see what happens. Whee. Oh yeah, no kidding. Um, in, in chat, I wish there was a way to go from searching a menu config directly to where it's defined. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really hard. I mean, I, most of the time I rarely use menu config anymore just because I'm after specific things. You can press the number. Okay, hold on. This requires this requires looking at. There's a number. Oh, one, two. Ha. Two. Holy cow. See, very important to do this where I've got so many other people watching. <laughs> Thank you. That's only years of pain solved. Thank you so much. Two. Wow, there's like no... Like, it's in parentheses. How interesting. So all of the other hinting about something that you can press is lit up like the red here for these letters which you can you know you can hit s to jump down to things or the not the s i guess these are the blue or it's in um these types of braces the the uh, greater than less than braces well i think clearly we need a patch to when you can fade because like that too if that too were blue or yellow and in in greater than less than braces, that might stand out as something you could press. Do 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 do. Okay. Let's see what we've got for. I don't know. Uh, let's... Hopefully, I don't have a file name now. Okay. Uh, make numbers in menu config. Search. Something like that. Okay, I'll just come back to that. Well, thank you so much. Yes, good first patch for some. Agreed. All right, uh, here we are. FGKSLR is booted, so or not booted, a uh, built. Yay! No, no warnings, no nothing. Very clean. Uh, let's look at. Now let's blow our minds with looking at the elf file sections on this VMX. Now you see. Ugh, now you see. Literally every single function that uh, wasn't already explicitly moved into a section uh, has a separated section, which of course means when you get to <laughs> down to the end of it, you've got like 87,000 sections. Um, why, uh, why do you start QMU and then SSH into it from a different terminal? 
because I don't like dealing with the terminal bindings and accidentally hitting control C and having the KVM shut down, but you can change the terminal. Anyway, it's just easier and more, uh, I don't know, more realistic to have started the machine separately and I can SSH into it. Um, that way I can, I know the network's working and stuff like that. I don't, I don't tend to go in through the console unless things are really, really broken. Um, anyway, so those are the, uh, you know, tens of thousands of sections. So you'll notice the, the size is not much different. Uh, something else sort of similar. Um, you know, things, things are bigger. Let's try this. By nature, they're just being uh, more sections, but the actual code text size is, I mean, is roughly the same. I mean, I'm not exactly comparing the same, uh, the same builds with and without, though we could. Um, so the real extra information is just on the ELF sections and, and then what's needed to lay them out. So uh, let's boot this, what do I call this? It's just FGKSLR. Um, and there's an early, like a brief pause there. You could barely see it. I think we spent more time decompressing the kernel than laying it out. Uh, but let's go see if it's still my scroll back. Okay. Yeah, so sort of the, <clears throat> the stuff that's not, you know, seen in, in the regular the regular boot is this stuff. Um, looking through the section headers, figuring out the symbols, resorting um, the KL sims since they're going to end up being in a different order. Um, doing all the relocations uh, inside because if the functions moved around um, and you're going to call a function from somewhere else, you're going to need to know where that is. So the relocations uh, need a little bit more work. And then similarly, uh, the except exception tables and the org tables uh, and a bunch of stuff that gets pre-computed. Uh, normally it's pre-computed at build time and just stuck into the kernel. Um, when the functions get moved around, uh, they end up in a different place. So all of those things need to be sort of reshuffled. Um, I actually think there's an interesting argument here that doing that sorting even here in this in this you know sort of super worst case scenario is very fast. And I wonder why, like what's what's the rationale for doing it uh, at build time? Uh, and, I suppose it is technically more efficient if people aren't booting with FGKSLR, but still, it's so fast. Um, so yeah, so that's a that's a booted machine, um, and if you look at okay, all sims that I can type, look at this get past the per CPU stuff. You can see early access. Right, yeah, I think I think the issue probably was they need to be sorted for early, you know, at early boot and the thinking before was no one in their right mind is going to try to <laughs> shuffle this uh, before we've actually started the, uh, the kernel proper, uh, which now you have been forced to do. Uh, so if it's in the build, <laughs> It's uh, it's uh, it's a lot of, it's a little bit more sensible, but FGKSLR is uh, has added requirements, so so be it. Uh, anyway, so some of these early early symbols uh, are collected into separate sections, uh, so they're not as randomized. Um, but if we say copy this to Sims one. Yes. And we reboot. We now we get our next one into two. We can see uh, how exciting 
this gets. All right, so let's go look for where text is. This is a 93A. And so that's sort of, you can see the base offset of, uh, of KSLR, like the regular KSLR is there. Um, so it would be nice to turn off KSLR, but keep FG KSLR <laughs> to do a, a cleaner comparison of what's moved and what hasn't, uh, which might be an interesting exercise for this, uh, since, you know, it builds, it boots. Uh, not much, <laughs> not much to show as needing fixing. Uh, it, it's, it's. I think this is in good shape. Uh, I mean, I thought so with V, with V4. Um, but anyway, if you go down a bit and look at other things, uh, like ext4, it's going to be in a pretty different place. Uh, doing 8a. All right, so this is at a pretty radically different location, but let's try it. Let's do a let's do a, a comparison of turning off the base address. Uh, yeah, I was uh, so yeah. This is uh, doing it as a root user. The Regular user will see, well, regular users won't see anything, right? Uh, sorry. Because it'll all be zeros for them, but if I turn that off, uh, so that the regular users can see KL Sims. Let's see, I don't know, I still got it off. Why is that? What have I forgotten? Yeah, KL Sims. I've just been fighting with this and another thing because it doesn't use the standard percent %p hashing. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to show was the, the individual things. So let's go, uh, let's shut this down for a second. Um, I think you had changed to no FGKSLR as the command line. Yes. Okay, so let's, let's look at Let's look at a boot with that turned on or off. Um, so this one here is the directory, the like Linux build directory that I'm booting the image from. And then after that is uh, the arguments I'm uh, booting with. So if I turn this off, we just get the decompression, uh, but we still see Chat for this. Oh, uh, yes, that's the that's the topic we're on. I've got that linked from the panel right now uh, on the front of front of Twitch. Um, okay, uh, continuing. Let's go back in here. Let's look at. Um, we actually did retain it, right? Yep, okay. No FGKSLR. So if we do our, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to add a panel to the builder. Um, that is a, oops, why is that not there? Oh, because I can't spell, that's why. So that's a Xeon Gold 6154. Um, it's a kind of crazy build workstation. Um, it's very nice. We're making, we're doing builds quickly. Um, okay, so let's uh, back to KL Sims. Looking at looking at the output here of KL Sims dot one. Um, again, we we'll look for text, which is the beginning of the kernel. So we see, you know offset from the standard amount. Uh, but if we reboot, we'll just have that 
base pushed and everything else will be uh, basically the same. So let's turn off. Compressed. This lot I think is here. Gotta find where the offset is. This is in there. Not avoid. Init. Slot. force ourselves into the same, yeah, so slots fetch random, I think is what we want, yes. Fetch random, unsigned wrong is, no, I don't want to return zero. I think I just want this to be zero. Hopefully. Let's see if that works. Um, I think we'll try finding where we do the virtual. There's the get random for that as well. Um, that's random address times that plus minimum, I think that's been a while. So if we just force these to be zero, I think that will very forcibly turn off um, FG KSLR. Uh, sorry, uh, just KSLR, not FG. Um, so let's see what we do with that. a little timer in my build tool to tell me how long the last one was so I can know but this is just linking the VM Linux again after one small change to the, the boot stub um, yeah how do I get the time thing so I can show you my horrific build script uh, but uh, let me Okay, so let's see, where's my timer? Uh, countdown. So this runs in the background. You just give it a time and it'll just start writing the time counting down. And what I've done is every time a build finishes successfully, I just write out how long it took. And I use that as the countdown for the next time. Uh, I think it's called dot build dash time dot log so dot build time log so it took 54 seconds last time uh, before it took longer um yeah so um going back over uh yeah so kslr the basic kslr is just an offset base at the bottom and um fg kslr completely shuffles all of the unexplicitly sectioned functions, which is, you know, something like 80,000 we saw. Actually, I guess it's probably less than that. It's probably 40,000 or fewer uh, into um, uh, into separate sections and randomizes each of those. Instructions? Nah, I don't think that'll really get us much. <laughs> um, what I'd like to see, though, is, um, you know, there's profile-guided optimization and a lot of these other things is sort of trying to get a sense of which things need to be cache local to, to get speed ups. Um, and right now we just sort of, you know, without FGKSLR, you just sort of get however things were laid out uh, when, when it was written in code because things are just laid out in the order that they were written for the most part. There's some inlining and optimization that goes on, but the, there's mostly just a guess of what, of how we think things need to be laid out in memory. 
Um, so there is a potential for FGKSLR to get laid out in a way that is slightly less performant, but at the same time, there's an equal chance it'll get laid out in a way that is more performant. Uh, so having something further down the road where you can actually say, hey, I know that the workloads for my kernel do this, I'd like you know these subsets of functions to be laid out in this way, uh, would get you runtime performance improvement that you didn't have to do on a rebuild or anything. Um, okay, so let me try booting whatever horrible thing I've just done. Um, Let's see what we get. Hey, it booted. <laughs> um, now let me go. So I turned off uh, FGKSLR and I turned off, I've hard turned off uh, KSLR. So if we for text, there we are at uh, 81000, which is what I'd expect. And we can verify this. Reboot and come back. Yeah, so if you have a fixed seed, which is something that um, uh, Kristen uh, had in earlier, ver I mean, has, there is still a patch, I think, but it's not included in this right now um, because you end up, I think, if I'm remembering Kristen, you ended up with a different random number generator, which was weaker for, the, for that style. But anyway, we could get something similar. Uh, so if we get Kelsons in here again, in theory, if I've done everything correctly, there should be no difference between these. Yay. OK. So this means we always, like the KSLR has been disabled in code. I just short circuited it to always pick the first slot. Uh, but we asked at boot time for FG KSLR to be disabled. Um, now. I can reboot with uh, without FGKSLR disabled. And in theory, we should be able to compare only those functions that got shuffled. All right, how to expose the seed. Um, I, my idea was you'd sort of do it from the outside wouldn't actually like you can't you can't look at the layout and go um hey i want to change this so i'll change the seed this way what you do get is pick a random seed boot with it measure it and just repeat that process until you get performance that you like <laughs> or that is better in some way uh, and then use that seed so i think it just needs to be external um it, we don't actually have to know it or expose it inside the kernel. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what it was, is moving ChaCha20 into the early boot stage. Ugh. Um, okay, so here we are. Get, um, well, let's do something after. This is scale sims one to scale sims uh, stock, we'll call it. And then we'll record this boot, which is KSLR1, and then we'll, well, actually, we should already be able to see the difference between stock boot and uh, this one. I would expect a ton moved around. Right, OK. So we can already see that things have moved around a little bit. Ordering is a little different. Why did we get startup64 moved? <laughs> this must be a result of the shuffling, shuffling the text order. Interesting. Okay, so here's where we start to get all of these have been moved. All right, so like, uh, let's just pick something randomly between KL Sims stock and KL Sims FG. Uh, I should make those the same length. One, two, three, four. How about that? Uh, 
Okay, a little bit easier to compare. Uh, so you can see they got bumped around in, in, a, in, the, in the middle of where they are. Um, and they got bumped around relative, relative to other things uh, that are nearby. Uh, for example, let's see if x86 PMU event has other named things. Right, so we see here in a stock boot, these are all relatively near each other here in the event underscore I should have looked for as an example. So these are all relatively near each other. See these are spread out and down here. These do not look like they're anywhere near each other. So there's all of those PNU events were spread um, so, it does what it says, uh, and we can see on another reboot that we should get yet another layout. Massive diff, and we should see a difference between the first and the second boot. And we do, of course. What do we can even see? Like how these are different between the two, the two runs, the first and second run. And they're basically all over the place. Um, so I wonder if there's actually, you know, and it's, it's helpful to be able to turn off KSLR but keep FG KSLR. So I wonder if it's actually worth uh, splitting those, um, splitting those out because right now I know it's hardwired to if you turn off KSLR, it'll turn off FG KSLR, which I think is certainly reasonable. But it makes me wonder if we need like, you know, boot with KSLR equals base or KSLR equals function granular or KSLR equals base, function granular, etc. Some sort of finely grained control, but it's probably not really necessary, but if we end up with more people asking about it. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's out. It's mostly useful for debug or doing, you know, real-world statistical analysis or anything like that. Um, so, I mean, I've seen options in the kernel for uh, less of a reason. So maybe it's an interesting idea, but uh, it certainly should not hold up getting it landed. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is this is happy. It's all good. Uh, I think. Let's see, so if I do this in, uh, right, so let me talk about the, the one piece that I've already covered a little bit was, I'm um, looking at the read elf here, we see all of these, here I'm in x86 PMU again, um, we see all these separate sections here, um, and what the, what the linker actually does in the face of that, let me go look, show the linker script effectively. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be super useful. Um, yeah, we had to actually um, disable this. So what the linker would tend to do is to collect all of these section names, the text.function name or whatever, and stuff it all into one section. Um, Question about it getting bigger with uh, FGKSLR. So it's mostly, um, the effect is minimal, but uh, it is mostly in the metadata about the sections and some padding. I think the final image, Kristen can remind me the details, I think the final image gets laid out in a way that the padding is not as bad. Um, so the runtime image I think is very nearly identical. Uh, but 
let's try it while I'm looking at the linker scripts. Um, uh, let's do another work tree for fun. Do, 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 do. Uh, this one, uh, we'll call it out. Uh, nope. do a better direct comparison. Um, first of all, let's get rid of this. So let's turn this back off. And I'm just going to do it manually. I think that gets us what we need. Okay, let's get that started running. Um, and Reason why it equals n, man. Yeah, it's um. <laughs> there's. I think that's mostly historical, but there is this concept of uh, something not being set and something being missing and something being yes and something being n. It is awkward, and I think changing it now is mostly never going to happen. Probably what I should have done for this example was to use the scripts config dash d config fgkslr. That's sort of the better way to turn things on and off. Um, anyways, that build is stopped. Why? Ha! I filled out my drive finally. One moment, please. your answer. Can assign a value to a symbol that is not visible. So if a uh, if, if config item couldn't exist at all because something else was disabled, uh, it would be invalid to try to set it to no. That's that would be my understanding of what he was saying. So here I am still trying to answer the first question. Fair enough, more complicated. Okay, so there we are. And let's say our tree pruned, forget about everything that went away. Um, there, a little bit more space now. We, let's try it again. Get the CPUs warmed up. Okay, it's up and running again. Um, so let's look at um, let's compare these sizes first of all. Um, Arch six boot. No, it's not. It's easy images here, I think. Right. 
Anyway, that's uh, XZ compressed. Which, of course, hilariously called BZ image, even though it isn't. It is a few cores. Okay, it either failed or finished. It finished. Okay. Um, so if we look at size VM Linux, oh, let's make sure first of all our config did in fact stay disabled. Not set, not set, okay. So we should be able to compare the size of this with um, VM Linux. So the, the two one is the uh, with the config disabled. So there's you know a fairly big difference in what is it a uh, so ten percent would be six and that's about a two so it's maybe two percent if I did my math quickly correctly. Um, and if you look at Pressed image. You can see there's uh, some difference as well. That one's a little bit larger. But now the question is is it bigger in the runtime image? Think about the best way to compare that. Um, I don't want to sit here and add up all the load sections. I think we just use look at um, look at having it booted. All right, so the end. So look at text and end. Image size FGK. Let's shut this down and boot the other one. Do, 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 do. Stock ish. And now someone gets do hex math for me. 28F1. <laughs> Anyone a good hex calculator? <laughs> I hate doing BC because I have to uppercase everything. Actually, that's just really easy. <laughs> I'm just staring at it. Uh, okay, FG KSLR two six two C zero zero zero. Interestingly, it is smaller. The in image 
is actually smaller. I wonder if that's just because the padding layout is more efficient. Hmm. Yeah. Fascinating. Anyway, there is your answer. The BZ image is a little bit bigger um, uh, because of basically that a whole bunch of that stuff can't be or isn't compressed. And then the, the VM Linux itself has, you know, 84,000 more sections, <laughs> section entries, I should say. It's mostly just metadata. Um, let's see, question. Rock chains almost dead inside the kernel. Um, perhaps Kristen can answer that, but ROP isn't really dead in the kernel. Um, very, very little in the ways that machines are using, uh, I should say, very few Linux kernels are running with uh, a, a strong CFI. Uh, right now, the last couple of years of Android phones have that in the kernel, uh, which certainly, uh, you know, makes it a lot harder. It doesn't get rid of it necessarily, but it makes it way harder. Um, and then for uh, without CFI, ROP is very much not dead because most kernels are sort of a, a published known image. Uh, so you don't even need information leaks much at all to figure out where things are uh, for as an attacker, what you're targeting, you know the layout. Worst case, you have to figure out the base offset. Um, I would agree, use after free is significantly worse. <laughs> The, the question is about um, the flaw versus the exploitation technique, right? So use after free might gain you execution control after you manipulate a function pointer inside the kernel in some degree, which can be mitigated a bit by CFI, can get mitigated by this, um, whereas the ROP tends to be about what do you do with the right primitive that you've got from a use after free. Um, so they're sort of in different areas, but getting rid of the use after free uh, would be certainly more effective. I'm looking forward to memory tagging and some of the things that are down the road for, for other hardware. But we don't have that right now. And running with like KMs, you know, the kernel memory sanitizer on production loads tends to be pretty heavy duty at the moment. Um, but yes, it would be nice to, to, like, that is another avenue of investigation. But in the meantime, we can do these things. So, uh, okay, that's that's it, I think, for looking at image size differences and everything else. Um, I guess this is less of, a, less of a review and more of a, hey, look at this thing. Um, let's go back to this, which is, I can say now, happily, do do do. V5. I'll say this. And boots. About 10 is about to have the merge window open. Um, what tree will this go in? So likely, likely this will go through the x86 tip tree um, since it's touching all of those internals. But um, it's a bit of a challenge because some pieces of it, like the dealing with greater than 64K sections. A bunch of those were scattered into other tools and other trees. Um, a bunch of those have been taken already upstream and they're already landed, uh, but I think there's one left in here. But usually when it's one or two things, uh, the x86 maintainers will take it. So my hope is that the x86 maintainers will pick this up. Um, let's see who we've got on CC. Thomas, Ingo, Boris. Looks good to me. I'll add, uh, let's do that. Okay. Go to 
tip. say was what changed for the live patch bits, which um, is mostly not something I'm qualified to review, <laughs> but they seem happy with it. Yeah, uh, I think I didn't, um, Kristen, didn't, didn't Thomas uh, review it uh, as well? He had some questions that I answered. Um, I think everyone's fairly happy with it. Uh, and it's, I mean, if it works with Live Patch and all these other things, uh, it's hard for anyone to say this needs more work or something. I don't know. I think it's pretty stable. It's such a, I mean, it's it's clean because it just deals with the sections. Hmm. Which gets me to one of the things I wanted to point out in Linux Next. Um, so. Linux Next, uh, I made a change to uh, the linker gets will now get angry if you try to include a section it doesn't know about. Um, let's see. Prep. Okay. Right, so um, let's look at this. Right, so this is orphan handle equals worn. So what I was, uh, well, right, I guess he looked at the um, cover letter. But anyway, I, I think it's, I think it's good. I hate to see anything stop it, but we've got, people sort of got an extra week here, it looks like, because Linus is probably delaying the release by one week. So maybe they'll review it. Um, we can wave our arms some more after the merge window, but people are probably gonna be busy looking at that. Um, for a bit. Anyway, this is a uh, orphan handling. So uh, what I'd shown in, in the read elf output was all these sections. Uh, before they'd end up in dot text, uh, and where was a there was a specific. Let's see if I can get exactly where the link script is. Um, layout is in, well, that's in the modules. Um, uh, where is it? Anyway, it started to show where this header defines text main. Um, and this is how it collects it into sections, in the output sections. So if we look for text, text. Um, here it is. Oh, it's in Chrome, it's not a header, okay. So if we see here, this is how the linker ultimately collects the .text section that you see in the VM Linux uh, file. You get a whole collection of other sections that are called the input sections that are coming out of the .o files and everything that got built. Um, and the linker is instructed in that other one to say, collapse everything that matches these input sections into the, an output section named just .text. Um, and for uh, function granular, we turn that off. Uh, we do not collect them, um, which is, uh, is a problem for the orphan handling if it warns on unknown sections. Uh, what happens is the linkers, uh, both in both for bin utils under under GNU tools and uh, for LLD out of the LLVM tools, is they attempt to put input sections that are not explicitly named somewhere nearby. Uh, so they look like text. Let's put them near dot text. Um, this has a variety of 
side effects and unexpected behaviors in chat. You're welcome. Um, so for, for us to avoid the orphan section warning that I added because we were having situations where really hard to debug problems were the result of just some section being moved somewhere weird um, unexpectedly, and we could have had a warning. Uh, there's no way right now in the linker to say, you know, uh, something like pass through. Uh, here, let's show you discard, what discard looks like. Uh, of course, it's in the header. So the discards, are, they just say slash discard, and then you list all these section types. Uh, so it would be really nice if in here, near uh, text, you could say, by the way, I want pass through of everything named, you know, everything else named, whatever. Something like this for for the linker so that it would say, okay, I do know, like now I know it's a, it's not an orphan anymore because it was collected by something, but I don't want to uh, change the output section name. I should just leave it whatever it was called. Um, to do this manually, unfortunately, where you just, um, like I tried this once, which is instead of having this general pass through, I could say dot text dot PMU now gather all of the dot text dot pmu and you just make a single like you just keep doing this for all of the 80,000 <laughs> or whatever all the 40,000 functions um, it turns out that the, uh, the linker tools do a, a linear search of the linker scripts that they've parsed and it, it I think it took something like an hour to link just because it was so unbelievably inefficient at looking up what it should name the thing. Um, so in the meantime, we have to depend on orphan handling, which means we have to turn that back off if we're gonna do this uh, in the next release. Um, so that's sort of a, a thing to solve going forward. Uh, but I don't think it'll be very hard because um, as you saw, this one is linker flags. So basically fixing this for x86 um, is, uh, here, let's go orphan, whoops, of course not here, sorry, in the next next. We can just say, since this is a plus equals, if and if, config, fg, kslr, and if. Like, that's all we need to do to keep that from breaking us uh, under FGKSLR. And I kind of intentionally designed this, uh, this edition to be able to be uh, turned off again in this case. Now, once we actually get some kind of pass-through support, we won't need this fix, but that'll be the fix uh, in the future. Let me get rid of that so I don't confuse my tree. Uh, so next is, let's try it with Clang. <laughs> ah, yes, uh, Kristen, the, the orphan stuff and next, yeah. Um, do I think pass through needs changes in linker? Yeah, the linker needs to actually know what, what that is. Um, and we're gonna need both bin utils and, um, and LLD teams to agree on how that should be named and how it should work, uh, just because I don't think anyone's needed anything like it before. Uh, there was you know, sort of prior prior art uh, with the discard thing where you just sort of collect a whole bunch of stuff and do something with it. The thing you do with discard is nothing. You ignore it. Um, but that still counts as being handled. So we want a something that effectively says, uh, handle it, put it here, do these other things with it, but leave it alone. Didn't boot for them. Well, let's find out. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we need to rebuild our .config file since uh, it didn't go through. Switches. Switches. 
Clang options. So the first step I can do is I can build only with Clang, but leave the linker still be uh, then utils. Uh, then we can switch to including LLD. Uh, and then we can switch to all of the tools being the LLVM tools like you know AR and everything else that's in the build. Uh, so let's let's do it. Uh, I have already built Clang. Uh, if you want, uh, if you want to look at that, I have it in the topics on uh, on Twitch. But the kernel documents for that are. Uh, Here is sort of the beginning of doing stuff uh, with Clang. So what I tend to do is a make old def config with Clang. Because there are some build options that get shuffled around. And now let's go look at this and make sure we just use the that KSLR turned on in both places we do. And let's see what we get. And it immediately break because, oh right, because uh, it didn't finish. Let's see what happens now. So, what do we want to look at? Uh, this is, I think, this is the booted image, the non non FGKSLR, or rather, it's the code changes, but the config is turned off. So we'll get rid of this. And that's shutting down, and that's building. Uh, let's look at chat again. Right, uh, work trees. Yeah, so I, I've seen a lot of people that use uh, dash O, dash capital, not dash, uh, capital O equals to change where you put your build output. I tend to find that um, I'm, I don't really need to save build output uh, on its own. It's usually very, very tied to the, the the actual source I'm working on or the tree I'm working on. So for me, work trays, uh, work trees make a lot more sense. Now they take up, you know, as much space as the source does, but you don't get a full Git checkout. The, the full Git checkout stays in the, in the main, wherever you actually physically perform the first, uh, uh, the first clone. Uh, but the work trees are nice because now I've got whatever I was doing. There's the branch I'm working on. There's the build I just did. Um, I, I've, I think it's a lot, a lot easier. Um, okay, there was, however, a warning somewhere up there. Hmm. Interesting. Why would, why would Clang see that and not GCC doesn't really matter because oh I see define it to set versus define it to one on the command line let's go look so the issue it's complaining about is um, boot compressed make file It's about disable exports. So this um, C flag is effectively the same as doing uh, define disable exports one, I think. Um, but we think I think we have this already, and it seems that GCC is happy. Uh, yeah, so. In utils, we've already got it, but we're um, already setting that in the make for everything. 
and it's uh, Clang is just being hypersensitive because these are technically not the same, but they tend to have similar results. That this is sort of equivalent to equals one, and the other one is equivalent to just set, but without actually having a value. Um, so what we should look at first is if how utils is built, and it is included in the object files just like everything else, it seems. Yeah. So, um, looks to me like if we go look at where this got changed, interesting, that was pretty recent. just a change it's sort of unnecessary at this point um, or I should say redundant to additional changes yeah so this is just part of the, the core this is the core change um, cool oh we don't actually need that line anymore I think <laughs> uh, let's do okay, build again let's do that again Should have the same effect, just without the warning. Do to do to do. What I'd really like is parallel linking, because when doing these rebuilds, frequently it's only a couple different object files that get changed, and then you have to link the whole kernel back together. Um, it's slow. Anything that speeds up the linking, I'm happy with. Of course, I should probably go back to a, a, a fast compressor as opposed to a strong compressor, but I wanted to exercise the XZ compressor a while back, so I switched to it. Um, okay, so that's finished. There's no warnings. That's built with Clang. Let's see if it boots. Uh, nuance, FGK SLR is our tree. Do, 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 decompressing, and poof, off we go. Hooray! I see no warnings, I see nothing, nothing going on. Nothing bad in there, I don't, nothing freaked out, it booted, it's happy, I can SSH. I'll call it a success. All right, whoops, let's shut it down, and let's add Will this correctly blow everything away and start back from scratch? I think it will. ZSTD. Interesting. That really shouldn't change anything, but let's go try it. All right, it is not rebuilding, so let's start from a... Let's start from just wiping out everything and making sure we get everything completely, even the object files, um, rebuilt. Z, S, T, D. Well, let's, um, let's boot this and then switch it and then um, switch over to Z, S, T, D. Uh, Z, S, T, D is pretty new, so uh, I'd be, yeah, I'd be curious if, um, yeah, as Joey's watching said, Z, S, T, D is relatively recently added. It's maybe possible that it, uh, is writing past the end or reading, doing something slightly silly and doesn't work nicely with uh, FGKSLR. Might be worth them trying not Z, Z, uh, ZSTD as their, as their compressor. Oh, in fact, I misread Kristen is not booting using ZSTD, sorry. Okay, almost done with that link.
Okay, uh, I don't think I saw anything silly happen. Nope, okay. Da -da -da -da. Decompress, boot, boot. Happy, happy. Come on, Kristen, can't you wait, write some buggy code and then I can solve horrible problems, but everything just works. Okay. Boots and is happy under clang with everything else. Let's try a uh, everything enabled. Um, so answering in um, uh, answering in chat. So it's everything that didn't have an explicitly named section right now. The first step is basically everything that didn't have its own stuff that got collected into, that was not already pre-collected into the dot text. So if you look at things like the scheduler and maybe perf, I don't know, I think definitely the scheduler, it's explicitly named like dot sched dot text. And then in the linker script, it says, please collect into the dot text output section things named you know, dot star dot text or something like that. Um, and so those are not being randomized right now. The idea was let's start with all the stuff that in theory is not sensitive to being moved around and then come back and look at, um, uh, look at each of those, you know, specifically named sections. All right, the question is about ZSTD. So I, I, um, I misread what, what Kristen had said, but uh, the, if the compressor made a difference on FGKSLR, which it seems like it hadn't, but if it did, I would say, well, those things are happening at the same boot stage, and it's possible if you've laid something out or you've had the inappropriate heap size or something else, there could be some kind of nasty interaction that's really specific to a, a particular build or a particular config because of how things end up being sized or laid out. Uh, it shouldn't, if all of those, if each piece was designed correctly, they shouldn't interact. Uh, it sounds like they don't actually, which is good because that sounded like a terrible bug. Why is my build stuck? Hey, hey, hey. Now we've got clang problems. Oh, no, there it went. I wonder why. It's strange. Something took a bunch of time, but it wasn't obvious where that was happening. Host CC, object copy. I don't see anything that would have taken a long time. I didn't report the compression. Hmm. Go look at when it gets reported. Fascinating. Um, I would expect whatever happened immediately before this is what stalled the build without any output. But I don't see it. Um, so it would do this, it would report that, and then start this command. So that'll require some additional looking at if I really care. But anyway, this is a full LVM equals one build, so none of the bin utils were used for booting this, or building it. Decompressing and booting, yay! Everything just works. This is a relief. 
I didn't even see it in version. Do, 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 do. Built with Clang and LLD. Happy, happy. That said, I'm building with Clang 12, <coughs> the unreleased latest build, um, and I know there's ongoing work to fix all kinds of nasty corner cases and other things that um, uh, like Sammy Tolbinen keeps running into for both LTO and CFI. Um, so uh, that's nice. Anyway, people might get different results with Clang 10, which I suppose in theory I could test, right? Clang 10, I have it. No, I just got Clang 9 on here. Who won't though? As I'm starting to run out of time. Um, just reading through chat here. Yeah, question on what what needed special handling in the the sim, like the, the design simplicity of this series is that basically the compiler does most of the work uh, as far as generating all the relocations, which is so nice. So it's only the places where the kernel has done stuff outside of sort of the ELF standard, right, with exception tables and all these other things. That's nice. Um, yeah, that is kind of dark magic for me too, <laughs> answering to chat. Clang 12 with LTO and, uh, oh, the internal, uh, right, the integrated assembler, thank you. Um, with the LTO patches. <laughs> I wonder if it was kernel LTO or an LTO built Clang. I wouldn't expect the LTO built Clang to break. Uh, well, since I've still got time, hold on a second. Let's let's try it. <laughs> oh, let's get the latest. Changes to it. Uh, that was a refactoring of the job server. Okay, uh, hold on. Let's try. Mm -hmm. Add another work tree. <laughs> What's it called? This <laughs> LTL plus FTKSLR. Why not? Um, I'll base this off a of master first because I want to apply these in, in sort of order. Uh, uh, this is LTO V uh, 3 ish, <laughs> 4 pre. And I always get the order on this wrong. Yeah, the, um, the the code handling for the uh, like exception handlers is fine. The issue was that the the actual like the exception handling finding code uh, expected a sorted an address sorted list to find um, or I don't forget if it was B searched or just linear for exception tables. Uh, Kristen knows the nitty-gritty details on that one um, but it does a it, like the kernel does the lookup like manually so it, it needed it expected them in a specific order even though the code if it was you know run if you call the handler it would be fine and the fact that you got to the exception handler from wherever you were coming from was fine but the exception handler and looking it up to figure out oh do I, is this a bug is this a warning how do i handle what am i where am i supposed to, what else am i supposed to do would kind of lose its mind and then wouldn't be able to look up the exception on how to return to where it came from uh, okay all right LTO. and let's try uh, let's look at sammy series, oops. 
What's it called? Something else you don't want. Okie dokie. Can I merge NFS for. Yep. Looks like I'm able to merge this just fine. Okay. Zoop. That's a one. <laughs> um, kind of want to stop here first just to make sure this builds uh, for me. So let's do. Here, because we know that's working. But we need to run LTO. And now we'll use the fancy stuff I just learned about at the beginning of this. Um, let's do menu config and go look for LTO. Clang L2 and I press one. Poof! So exciting. All right, we want that. Exit. And then I also want, oops, exit. I also want a thin LTO. One. Clang, thin. I just already selected. Cool, cool. Do our other make and see if I mean I expect this to build this latest clang, uh, latest of Sammy's LTO tree. In theory, <laughs> in theory it'll build. I'm trying to do an LTO build right now. Uh, if you're not on latest, uh, the latest clang tends to be problematic for depending on which corner case you find yourself in. Sort of really standard stuff, like a def config tends to build. Um, but if you start adding more stuff, it gets more complex. Um, anyway, so this, this build is using all of LLVM, including integrated assembler, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you can see here, it's doing an LTO of the final, like a massive link of all these .o files, which are not actually .o files. They're actually the um, Clang, or sorry, the LVM intermediate uh, bit code. And now we get an elf out the other side here, but this is the big one. Can we see the memory growing? Mm, no, he's not growing too much. But again, this is one process doing that link. It sure would be nice to parallelize it. I am used to object tool throwing warnings on LTO builds. I am vaguely nervous about the stack mismatch in the red plane. But let's see if it boots. What else did it complain about? Interesting, interesting. Copy user. I think that's the Clang specific stuff that got added recently by Linus to make a copy to from user faster. Um, using asm go to output constraints, something. Okay, so this is LTO only. Uh, let's shut this down. So this directory is currently a lie because it's only LTO. It has booted. Hooray! And we can see block version. Again, it's clang and LLD. Uh, grab LTO from, from the 
running config. Yes, it's got this so is a booted happy LTO system. Let's do um, actually, I need to do that again, right? I can, uh, can I just cherry pick? E5, okay. Yes, so I should be able to merge this, although I made a change. Um, so let's go back real quick, and then I can commit my change, which was just to get this warning to go away. Um, I'm not gonna bother a full commit right now. Yes, so yeah, it's not a disk image. That's it's uh, sitting on. So sorry, uh, backing up. Context is from chat. Uh, what is Go doing? Which is KVM. It's this horrible, horrible command line that I have slowly pieced together over a lot of time. Um, you can ignore a whole bunch of this stuff, which is like. Memory sizes and NV dims while I play with things out of PStore and RAM oops. Um, but mainly I've got virtual net, virtual random number generator, got a monitor sitting there specifying a specific layout for uh, the cores. Um, and then I've got two raw disk images, which is like an Ubuntu Focal uh, on ext4. And uh, then I boot a specific kernel uh, into that image. All right, so let's do a git merge of v 5 What did it not like? Aha. So this was part of the LTO squishiness. Um, LTO said, hey, don't forget to please include these things in data main if you're using dead code elimination or uh, LTO clang. Um, uh, FGK SLR doesn't change. Um, doesn't change. Doesn't change data main. It's just that there's a different different set of changes here. Hold on, LPDX. So it's just this one. That gets consumed. Yep, those look identical to me. I think the issue is that this has gotten removed because it's down here now. Of course, it should be identical. Yep. And um, so the, the issue is that um, uh, LTO also uses uh, function sections. So normally we'd want to do this. We'd, we'd want a config LTO clang to actually uh, collect these together, except when uh, we're doing config FGKSLR. So we can say if defined this or defined config LTO clang and not config FGKSLR. That should keep us happy. And let's go look at the file again just to make sure it isn't mangled somehow. 
so I think this is correct. All right. Let's do our menu config again. I'm just so excited about being able to use numbers on the search because I did not know about that. <laughs> FGKSLR in one. Ta -da! Yes, please. FGKSLR is the modules got turned on. Two, they are. Exit. Okay, here goes. Let's see if this one works too. Do, 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 do. Um, I am reading chat. Yeah, I'm just a little delayed. <laughs> Zen machine. Yes, this was discovered early on in the <laughs> in the stream today. Another chat person and I both um, were bemoaning the fact that there was no easy way to just go from the search results to where the thing was defined. And someone corrected us to say, sure, just press the number that's next to it. And we both, our minds were blown. And now years of my life have been wasted. <laughs> um, right, yes, that's the, the patch to handle more than 64K sections needed also with LTO. Um, yeah, it, it's actually um, because the work that is happening is actually uh, Many of the places where you need more than the 64K section support actually happens before the final link. So both uh, Kristen and Sammy needed those for their respective series. Yeah, the Easter egg features. I don't want it to be an Easter egg. I, I took a to-do list to make it like it should be, it should stand out uh, somewhere. I have failed with my, I think I missed a closing paren here, so. Let me go fix that, but I'll let it finish up what it's got uh, for right now. First, I have to fright with the front end. I have no idea. Yeah. Don't have any good advice on fighting with, I assume you mean web front end. I don't do that. Anytime I make a website, it looks terrible. Uh, let's see. So I did this merge wrong. Let's look for where this happens. Paren, paren. Right. Okay. Let's try that again. Um, well, uh, landing a patch at all is, uh, like speaking to chat, landing a patch under the kernel at all is a pretty significant <laughs> achievement to start from. Um, I'd say just go from there. Um, and we were saying earlier, like this would be a good first patch for someone is to figure out how to change the, um, the menu config output, right? Uh, like the UI shows all these highlighted letters for things and has, um, you know, greater than less than brackets, whereas the numbers in the search results are not highlighted in any way and don't use uh, the, the greater than less than symbols. So um, if you want to do that, that would be awesome. <laughs> and then, yes, syscolor bugs would be very nice. There's hundreds of those. Grinding, grinding, grinding. <laughs> yeah, Coverity findings on Linux are hard. The trouble is Coverity is not very good at dealing with macros, um, and there are just thousands and thousands of, of false positives because it doesn't know how to process macros very well, and you can't overload a macro in the, um, in the Coverity I forget what they call it, like it's design, not design, like it, it's the, basically include code that tells Coverity what's happening inside a function. Uh, and you, there does not appear to be a way to attach things to macros. It can only, you can only attach stuff to actual function call sites. Uh, so getting the false positives down is super hard, unfortunately. 
that said, there are a bunch of things that do appear to be true positives that stand out as far as classes of problems. So it's still worth running. Okay. It finished building. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. <laughs> it boots. Hooray. Thank you, Kristen and Sammy. And I can get into it. It is still LTO'd. It is uh, still FGKSLR. K all sims looks like a crazy random mess. I love it. That's what we wanted. In fact, you can even see some of the um, the LTO artifacts in here. We start seeing things that were um, sort of pulled out during the LTO uh, to be uh, like common code, or they got inlined weird, or I forget what what this is, or maybe it's maybe it was static functions uh, because their visibility ends up changing, so they're named the same thing. I don't remember. There's a whole bunch of reasons why things get renamed in this now. Yeah, I don't remember right now. Um, can I feed Coverity preprocess code? Uh, maybe. Uh, mostly it came down to it's a closed source project and I. You know, there's only so much time I have in any given day to, to look at those things. I was kind of like, well, I'm not going to break myself on making sure Coverity runs clean. Um, it would be nice, but um, it seems like it takes a lot of work to make the kernel. Building the kernel under Coverity is a huge project in its own. Um, well, once again, I have much to fix here. Um, this all seems to work. So Kristen, I'd assume, tell your person to uh, use latest latest LTO, latest Clang. It all is happy from what I can see. I wonder what happens if now. Can I run CFI on top of this? I'm gonna think no. Uh, let's let's just go for it and see what happens. All right, sorry. What have I got? Uh, I need to fix that. press one ah. all right yes please use it yes use that uh, yes please let's do permissive for now if we even boot it all um. mm -hmm. yep clang clang shadow and permissive Let's build all the things. Uh, now, in theory, this will be fine. Uh, again, if the relocations are working, if all those pieces are glued together correctly, uh, which in theory, again, they should be because performing relocation of any kind works. Um, it's just that with the function relocation, it's a lot more going on in there, but in theory. Um, the shadow, uh, so that's not, um, that, that shadow is a different uh, shadow. It's not the uh, shadow call stack. Um, that actually got torn out of Clang for x86 just because it was racy and slow. 
Um, that's a shadow of uh, effectively the the module resolution stuff. Uh, I can get into it, but I just leave it on because it's more code. So if it if there's some problem with it, in theory, we would see it as a as a build issue. I don't actually this I'm not actually loading any kernel modules here, which I probably should, but we can get back to that. I just want to see if this boots first. I think that'd be amusing. Almost done. Object tool. Yeah, it's interesting the things that need to change about the build ordering when you don't actually have elf files <laughs> until the very last step. Instead of running object tool on everything, you have to run object tool all at once at the end. Um, so it's uh, it things fail later potentially than they should. Um, I'm of two minds about that, but the, the limits of LTO dictate that's that's sort of where we are. Some more modules to build. Yeah. Random multi-use tool for object tool. Yeah, object tool kind of does all kinds of junk that requires knowledge of the of the machine code. In theory, ARM64 is going to get an object tool, but uh, so far not yet, I don't think. I'm not sure where, where that stands right now. Mm -hmm. Surely we're done. Now, this is this weird stall here, so what? What is it? Object copy. Interesting. There's an invisible object copy happening. Oh, or is it still the LTO? It might still be... The, the non-module LTO step. Um, might be the LD no, because it's already finished that. Well, I will eventually go figure that one out. All right, let's see where we are. Shut this one down. Now can we break it? Ah, it's still booting. <laughs> All right. There you go, everybody. That is, um, let's see, we're working with FGKSLR, we're working with LTO, we're working with CFI. Impressive. Is there anything about CFI in the D message? No, there isn't. Uh, let's go, let's go poke it in the eye. Um, not that one. Let's cat, no, I don't have that one. How about um, FS debug, sys kernel FS debug, kernel debug, there it is. Um, provoke crash direct. Yes, so. So here we go. This is poking the kernel to try to make it do a bad thing. Um, so calling a matched prototype and this uh, match function prototype. So CFI would succeed and then calling a mismatch prototype. And since I asked for permissive failures because I wanted to at least try to finish a boot if things were wrong, uh, we, uh, we get a warning instead of it killing off the thread, which is what we want. So CFI failure, what failed? That failed, this target increment and integer failed because it called it from not where it's allowed to happen. And you can see the whole stack. So, see if I works. Um, question about Rust and kernel development. Um, I'm, I'm for it. Uh, it. It definitely works. There's a bunch of people that have been, been poking at the edges of it. Uh, I think the, I mean, Behavior-wise, it's it's great. Like, why why wouldn't I want Rust in here? You've got 
you've got the speed, you've got memory safety. Um, it's 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 great. The I think the problems come down to looking at the really nitty gritty corners of things. Like you know, um, Rust wasn't entirely designed for like uh, DMA access, right? You end up with unusual boundaries between things that are mucking with memory uh, in a kernel. Um, so making that really solid under Rust will be interesting. Uh, I think a lot of things, however, do not end up needing to get that complex, so Rust is fine. I think the main sort of impedance mis mis mismatch with Rust and uh, the kernel is just the build process. Right now, you know, Rust, you've got you've got cargo and pulling in crates and doing all these other things, uh, and that's just not how the kernel tends to be very monolithic and self-contained. Um, so trying to figure out the right way to have builds operate, you know, right now there's sort of what, you know, here's the specific compiler and linker and the kernel source, and that's, that's the entire build system, you know, ignoring some additional details. Whereas Rust is a much larger dependency tree on the things you need and getting the crates that you want in the right versions. Um, and good progress is being made on that, and that's fine, but it's, I, I don't see any specific problems with it. I, I think it'd be, I think it'd be lovely to have Rust in, and it's progressing. Um, <clears throat> well, we've tried to break the kernel. Uh, we've tried to break these series. Uh, we can't. It's the the code is too good. <laughs> uh, I think it might be, might be cheating on like using the latest Clang, but at the same time, that's the Clang that. We, in theory, have all the bugs fixed in. On the other hand, I might just be lucky because sometimes running the latest Clang means everything breaks uh, because something regressed. Uh, but for right now, today, this all boots, works together, and is quite, quite happy. Um, I know Sammy's going to be sending the LTO series again soon, and I'm again, I'm hoping for that in, you know, 5.11 or so uh, because everything appears to work. Uh, it is approaching... One o'clock, and I'm gonna. Uh, I'm hungry. I need lunch. Um, yeah, I know everything worked. I didn't even have that many typos. Um, so I guess there's a couple, a couple small notes um, that aren't. I mean, I I've stepped through the two merge pieces, which is dealing with Linux Next and orphan warnings, and dealing with LTO and the, you know, un unconsolidation of, of the, dot, the, the function sections uh, because we really want to have our read elf look completely huge. Did we get 80,000? 80, oh, slightly smaller this way. Probably a different config. 80,000 sections. <laughs> uh, anyway, if anyone's got Questions, ideas, or things they'd like to see next week. If you're, uh, if you're a repeat, um, did I leave no FJ, uh, FGKSLR on the command line? I don't think I did. Oops. Uh, yep, it's stock. Well, <coughs> my stock, which is what all my RAM oops overrides. Um, yeah. Sorry, everything works. This is terrible. What are we going to do? Ship it. Go home. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think this is real clean. Uh, all these, I mean, all three of these series have been seeing a lot of, a lot of attention. Uh, so it's not hugely surprising. Um, Performance is, why is performance bad? I didn't think that was true under uh, FGKSLR. I thought that just mattered sometimes, uh, workflow. Anyway, I'll go reread the cover letter. Mm -hmm. oh, that's 
solve performance of that. Boot latency is... No, I don't think that's important. I mean, especially when it's under a second. It takes me longer to decompress it than to work out the tables. Yeah, it's, it varies. Yeah, topics for next week. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I was kind of expecting to be doing stuff like, here's what it's like to send Linus a, a pull request, um, but it looks like we're going to be delayed a week. Um, I think there was some MM issues that Linus was working on uh, with, with a bunch of other people, um, and I think he wanted those to really stabilize. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do for next week. Um, I might I do look look maybe at some second testing or look at some other um, some other trees. I sort of ended up doing CFI here. I thought that would need to be a separate topic, but again, everything just worked. Uh, I915 broke. Yeah, I, I got the sense that a bunch of different things went a little weird. But um, anyway, so I sort of got a not spare, but I've got an unexpected week uh, at the end, a change in schedule, so it sort of shifts everything I was doing down by a week. Uh, but, mm, I don't know. Let me know. Email me or um, let me know some ideas if you want to see something in particular. Um, i got to fix up more of my build tools. But, anyway, I think that's, that's basically it. Uh, we did everything I could think of to break this <laughs> as far as as far as the build and behavior um, uh, for sort of the basic uses um, so uh, yeah and I learned uh, and a couple other folks learned that you can in fact press the number that's in here um, Paxine posted a patch of the riddle on Twitter um, oh right is this about um, the IRQ stack thing yeah I uh, I pointed out uh, to the Thomas and um, uh, and Sammy when Sammy stumbled over that uh, because it broke CFI um, that they should really not be putting a global stack pivot function, an addressable global stack pivot function. That's a, a, a bad idea. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, that's not been fixed yet. I need to need to convince some people that it's actually a problem. Uh, I sometimes get stuck with that. It's kind of like, well, this is a fundamental requirement of ROP. Yes, there are other stack pivots in the kernel, but this one is actually a function entry point. Like, like branch target stuff isn't going to save you from that. It's really, really bad. Anyway, uh, I assume I assume that's what uh, Pax team was talking about, but. Maybe there's more to it. Um, okay, I'll show Yoda Droid the last, the last bit from this that we found. Menu config. So I never noticed, and it was pointed out to me in the stream, that if you search for stuff in the menu config, that I cool. Thanks for telling me that where these things are. But as it turns out, the numbers on the side one. Two, three, four, whatever. Um, if you press that from here, you can you'll actually go there. Now, if I hit tab, it doesn't jump around like they're selectable. But if I say two, poof, there I am. Uh, I didn't know that existed. And it doesn't really take you there. It sort of enters you into that menu, but still. There's no, no up from there, but that's still better than not having it. Uh, anyway, it'd be nice if that was obviously selectable. Um, yay. Okay, well, that's it for me. Um, let me know if you have other ideas, topics, uh, things that break for you. Um, hopefully this was interesting. Um, thank you, Kristen, for joining, and thank you for the work on this. I'm excited to use uh, FGKSLR. I think it's pretty awesome. It'll be even cooler uh, when we get execute-only memory because then you can't even leak the contents of the kernel out um, to find what you need for 
constructing a rob or something like that. Anyway, thanks very much. See you people next week.